everyone, welcome to the Mintai Papers YouTube channel. My name is Janice and I will be showing you guys how I created this mixed media portrait using the Mintai Papers format. So I started off with drawing a portrait. I'm using a watercolor paper that is around 300 GSM. I start off painting a base color for the girl's face and just kind of build up shadows using a slightly darker pigment, accentuating the eyes, the nose, and the lower lip. I'm adding in a bit of rouge on the cheek. Now if you want to try out this kind of artwork and you don't feel confident about drawing your own illustrations, you can use stamps of lovely girl portraits and faces. Just make sure to use archival and permanent ink, stamp it on your watercolor paper, and paint over that. That's perfectly fine. So after going through my base colors and shadows, I'm moving on to painting the lips and the eye. Now the next part of the process is painting the hair. I don't normally paint this loosely because I take a lot of time to build up the colors on this part. But since a majority of her hair will be covered with different elements, I decided to just give it enough color and lines to make it more visible. The last part of painting our subject is adding an outline. As you can see, I'm just adding a bit of black lining to her face to make it look more prominent. Okay, so now that I'm happy with this painting, I'm going to move on to creating my floral elements. So the first thing that I do create is some cut-out templates. I'm using some parchment paper. I simply cut about a 2-inch wide strip of paper and then fold one end diagonally to form a triangle and cut that piece off. Then I'll fold it across again to make an even smaller triangle and fold it once more. Once that's done, I am going to draw on a guide of the shape of my flower. And then I'm going to cut along the guideline and this is how my flower will look like. Now I'm going to repeat the process again only this time before I fold it on the third time I'm going to cut off a few millimeters off the edge to make the square smaller than my first template so if you're wondering why I do the whole folding it diagonally then cutting it to make a square truth is it's just my way of creating a square that is of equal sides because I don't really like doing measurements so it, this is kind of how I measure my templates again I'm just going to draw the shape of my flower then I'm going to cut along the guide I drew and this is my second portion of my flower Okay, now that I've made two of these templates, I'm creating a third one that will be twice as small as the second one I created. I'm doing the same process as the previous two templates. This is how all three of them will turn out once layered on top of each other. Okay, I finished the first flower template. 
I'm going to create another flower this time with only two layers as opposed to the other one that has three. I'm repeating the same steps as before only this time I'm drawing a new shape. This flower is slightly smaller than the first one I created that way I get to show a variety of sizes on my artwork later on. Alright, now moving on to my last template, which is an even smaller flower than the other two. I also changed the shape of the second layer of this flower So these are all my floral templates. I have three different varieties. Now it's time to create my butterflies. I cut up two different sizes of paper. They are also roughly around two inches wide. And then I simply fold them in half like so. And I outlined the shape of my butterfly wings where one template is smaller than the other.
Now that I have all my templates ready, it's time to cut out the papers. As I've mentioned earlier, I'm using the Mintai Papers Farm Life. These are the 12 by 12 papers, but you can use the 6 by 6 if you have the paper pad available. So I fuzzy cut the elements on the cover page. At this point, I'm just deciding which paper would best suit the templates that I created. I've decided to use the number two paper for the largest flower. So I'm simply going to outline my template on the paper using my pencil. I'm going to cut them out like so. The next step was to cut a bit of the side of the petals, like this. That way, I can bend them more and not tear the paper off later. I'm just rolling the petals over my pencil to create some body to the flowers. So now I'm tracing the second template on my paper number 5. I'm just repeating the process as I did earlier. If you have a die cut machine and have the floral die cuts, you can definitely use those if you don't want to do it manually. As for me, I don't own one <laughs> and I really enjoy doing things by hand, so working from scratch is really fun for me because I find the process to be a great stress reliever. Now for the third flower, I'm using the number 4 paper. I'm just going to repeat the same process. And now for my butterflies. Uh, I decided to use the scenery part of number 3 paper and the other side of the number 5. I traced both templates on each paper.
and I'm going to stack them like this. All right, we're almost done. It's time to assemble the flowers. So I'm going to use some hot glue to stick the pieces together. I'm simply adding a stick-on crystal at the center of each flower that corresponds to their colors. Now for the butterflies, I'm going to stick on glue at the center of the larger butterfly and as for the smaller one I'm going to fold it in half and I'm just going to stick the, cre the creased area at the center that way it creates a some body to it Now before I stick in all my elements, I'm going to create another flower using some lace. So I'm cutting up a strip of lace just about the size of my paper, only slightly longer. Then I'm going to do a running stitch across the strip, like so. I'm going to pull on my thread to create some ruffles. And once I reach the end of my lace, I'm going to stitch both ends together to form the flower. Once that's done, we can now proceed to assembling the whole artwork. So at this point, I'm simply drafting where I'm going to place my elements. It's a long process, I know, but it's really fun to do. And once you see your whole artwork come together, it's really, really satisfying. It's a good idea to take a photo of the, of the placing you planned out. That way, you have a guide once you remove everything and stick in your elements. I'm using some stick-on crystals to add more embellishments and the first thing that I glue in place is my largest piece which is my lace flower. It's also a good idea to have some scraps of foam sheets with you that way you can add in some layers. If you noticed, I'm also adding some more hot glue to some areas that were that I already um, sticked in place. That way once it dries up, it also adds in some layers because I do like my mixed media projects to have a lot of body to it. Some final touches to add to this piece is brushing a bit of metallic paint. I'm using some golden and pink metallic accents and also splattering them around.
and then I'm going to add in a few more fuzzy cut elements to some areas that I feel needs a little more of it. And it's done! Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the Mintai Papers YouTube channel. And I look forward to showing you guys more projects in the future. Bye!